fall, always fall in love with expensive furniture and I know you do too. So today we're going to be building a console table that was originally $13,000, but I'm going to build it for two fifty. dollars Well, a smaller version. It's very similar. Anyway, let's get building. I really tried to start out strong here, but I blew a few. I am just working in a small garage shop. I don't have any increased capacity, but I'm going to make it work. I'm first going to cut the tapers for these legs. These legs are two by twos. I had some extra poplar for these, but you can just grab some two by twos at any hardware store. I really like Menards because they come not like construction grade lumber, so you know they're ready for making furniture. Just make sure you know exactly where your taper is going to be. And then I am going to make a taper jig for the miter saw. This is very easy to build. All you need is a couple pieces of scrap, some wood glue, and I really like to use spack screws because really you don't have to pre-drill, but I do it anyway. They're great for holding that wood glue and the scrap together, especially because I'm using MDF. The jig is basically one big L and really the most important thing you have to do is make sure that it's square so that you get an accurate taper. And again, you just screw it all together. Make it easy on yourself. Jigs are the way to go when you're building furniture. Look at that beauty, she's perfect. Now you just clamp it to your miter soft fence, line up the line that you made on your board, make sure you clamp everything to the jig and then make your cut. This is so easy and repeatable. You can do this with all four of your legs and you have a perfect taper every single time. I am using Edgewood pine panels for the rest of this build. These again, I bought these at Menards, so I know that they're not construction grade lumber. They were actually less expensive than plywood, so I definitely opted for these instead. I'm just using pocket holes and wood glue for this entire build, so it's very beginner friendly. But first I started out putting the legs together. This is always how I start off my furniture builds. And then we're going to pocket hole the bottom and attach that. This is gonna create a really sturdy base to work off of. Make sure your pocket holes are facing the bottom. That way you don't have to fill them or anything. No one is going to see them. Now it's time to add that back. And of course I drop it on the floor. I always seem to drop something, but that's okay. We still got it attached. Again, wood glue, pocket holes. They're your best friends. Okay, now here comes the fun part. It's time to get over your fear of routers. You're gonna use this router to make these smaller curves. I'm using a plunge router. It's a skills router, so it changes from a plunge to a fixed base. When you're doing circles or curves, I recommend a plunge router because you're basically plunging into the workpiece when you're making that curve or circle. I'm using the Milescraft Circle Jig. Make sure you're taking really, really slow, shallow passes. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but you are going to prevent any kickback. You definitely don't want that with a router. I'm using a spiral up cut bit for this router. It makes a really clean cut. I'm not going to have any burn marks and it's really easy and repeatable. So I'm going to link all that in the description as well. The larger curve was a little tricky. There are a lot of methods to make larger curves. I'm not exactly sure why I did this one, but you can if you want. All I did was attach a string to the radius of the larger curve and then drew a line with a pencil. So this gave me a pretty consistent curve. I cut it out with a jigsaw. Next time I'll probably curve some wood onto the piece and then draw the outline before I do the curve. I had a lot of sanding to do, so not necessarily what I suggest that method, but it worked in a pinch. Then I just pocket hole again and wood glued everything to the sides and to the front. If you are not using figure eight fasteners to attach your tabletops, any tops, 
you are missing out. Please, please go get them. You do not want your tabletops to crack. This allows for wood movement. It's extremely easy to use and it's sturdy. And then you don't have your top cracking over time or warping over time. For the doors, again, I use my Craig hinge jig, my beloved Craig hinge jig, and these Blum hinges. These are inset hinges. The Blum are the best because they allow you to adjust the door so you can get, especially for inset, you can get an accurate reveal around it. I had to add a scrap board on the inside so that the hinges sit flush with the edge of the leg so that it could actually open and close. And then it was time to add the drawer slides. I know a lot of people have problems with drawers, so I'm just gonna show you exactly how I do it. I put a piece of scrap in and attach the drawer slides. That's the first thing that I always do. It might seem counterintuitive, but I promise you just keep watching. Then I cut my sides of the drawer box to size and I'll actually attach them to the drawer slides. It's really easy if you use this piece of scrap wood to hold it up, then you can actually screw it in. Then you'll measure between those two sides and that's gonna be the exact, exact size that you need for the front and the back of your drawer. So that way when you cut it, you're never gonna have an issue with the door being too big or too small. You already know. Then you're gonna pocket hole the front and the back. Promise you, pocket holes are great for this and they're gonna allow it not to be seen when you actually attach the door front. I had some extra scrap beadboard lying around, so I just used that for the bottom. I cut it to size, but I added a half inch on each side and I'll show you why in a second. I set my blade to quarter inch height and half inch away from the fence. And you're gonna run a dado or what's a, called a groove on the bottom inside of all your drawer boxes. And this is gonna allow that quarter inch bottom to rest right in those grooves, which is gonna allow for a really sturdy drawer bottom. You can put all your crap in there and you won't have it falling out the bottom. This is a, a little bit more of an advanced method. It's still pretty easy if you have a table saw. If you don't wanna do that, all you can have to do is cut the bottom to size, glue and nail it onto the bottom. You can do either method, they're both great. Finally, put your drawers together. Again, wood glue, pocket holes. Make sure those pocket holes are facing out. That way when you put the drawer front on, they will be invisible. Since I was gonna be painting this piece to attach the drawer front, I used pennies to give me the perfect gap and then I nailed it on so that I could pull it out and screw it in from the back. I sanded it to 220 grit because I really wanted a smooth surface to work with, especially because I was painting. And of course I brought it into the garage and I forgot I put a bunch of stuff in there but I do all my finishing in the garage, uh, which is not ideal in the winter, but I had to do it for this project. I sprayed Rust-Oleum primer in black first. I really like this primer because it tends to fill in all the grooves in the wood, and especially with that pine green, I didn't want it to show when I actually did the black finish. Now, I was kind of nervous about this black finish. I wasn't sure I wanted to paint this black. I really thought I could maybe stain it a pretty dark brown color, but it's pine, so it's not my favorite thing in the world. So black was the way to go. After I did a coat of spackle on the whole thing to really hide the grain, I used a tack cloth to wipe off the excess, and then I used Rust-Oleum Milk Paint in Eclipse. 
This was a really smooth milk paint. I wanted a more aged look with the paint and this was perfect. I just used a brush and then I brushed in the direction of the grain and it, this stuff dried, I'm not, not kidding you, 30 minutes. So I was able to finish this thing in one day, which is, is unbelievable to me. I also didn't have to top coat it. You can if you want to, uh, but it's pretty durable. You don't need a top coat. It doesn't chip, which is absolutely amazing to me because it's less work that I have to do and less work that you have to do if you decide to paint it black. I also linked all the hardware in the description and this awesome jig for installing the knobs. I know a lot of people are scared to install door handles or any type of knobs handles. This makes it really easy and it makes sure everything is level.